The Sniper Elite series originated in 2005 with the first Sniper Elite game, Sniper Elite. Who would have thought? This original Sniper Elite game is set towards the end of the Second World War in April 1945, and you play as Carl Fairburn, a member of the US military. Today, however, we will be playing through Sniper Elite 5, where you play as Carl Fairburn, a member of the US military, in 1944 during the Second World War. The only difference being that we have apparently discovered time travel, given that the game is set one year in the past compared to the original, despite coming out 17 years later. In this game, Carl, codenamed The Ghost, is tasked with identifying and bringing an end to a secret Nazi operation. And for today's challenge, we'll be going for the best of the best achievement, meaning we have to complete the game on the hardest difficulty. Authentic. Let's get into it. As is the case with any game, the first mission is used as a tutorial to the mechanics of the game. In this case, we learn how to shoot people and watch their skeletons implode, which is apparently a core feature to this game, so I think it would be rude to not show you my initial reaction. Oh my, what on earth's going on here? I can see his testicles. As well as this, we also learn how to climb walls. And that's it. That is all of the training we received, but to be fair, I can imagine this is all the training you got when enlisting in the army for World War II, so authentic difficulty is so far living up to the name. From there, our lack of military training becomes apparent, as we manage to find ourselves in a situation very similar to how you would find me on a night out, behind a bush being pounded by a load of Germans. There, I see him. How on earth do I heal? I am in trouble, chat. Why is his mouth open so wide? How do I heal? Right. Okay, I, I'm... Yep, there we go. <laughs> we finally make our way out of that sticky situation and can actually make our way onto the main objective of this mission, which is to take out the Nazis' Mammut radar. This will mean the Nazis can no longer locate our coastal weaponry. If you've not played Sniper Elite before, I've discovered that there are always multiple ways to manoeuvre your way around and complete the mission. In this case, my choice was to use the Nazi trenches to head into the bunker and disable the radar generators. This appears to be the incorrect decision, as I proceed to be filled with enough bullets to make me look like a block of Swiss cheese. <gasps> ah! I was so close. Just, just, just this far off. <laughs> right, get me back in that trench. We finally make it to the generator and manage to overload it, and then head to the circuit breaker to overload the power and destroy the radar. Nice, let's go, come on. Now, don't get me wrong, this sounds easy, but it took me 20 minutes and 4 deaths to get from here to here. Truly one of the most embarrassing moments of my life. We make our way battered and bruised over the map to get to Exfiltration, which now finally brings an end to the first mission. Mission 2 fortunately has a much smaller map, confined to only one building and a courtyard, and only one objective, to infiltrate the office of Abelard Moller, a high-ranking Nazi officer and our main target for this game. To get to the building, we make our way round the right-hand side of the map, over a river. Although there are a few enemies at the river, it only took a few attempts, and once I'd actually decided to implement some stealth into my gameplay, we got through to the outskirts of the building. My first few attempts were to climb up the side of the building and head through the window and into the ballroom, aptly named as they rail me balls deep. Over and over and over and over again. Safe to say, the ballroom wasn't quite working for me, so we discover another route through the armory, which has a couple of guards in it. This takes us into the courtyard and into the nearest door of the building. We got spotted a few times by this guy, but by waiting patiently and picking our time, we got into the building without being spotted. In what I have to say, with my minimal knowledge of a game I've never played before, is the safest method. 
There's another way in. I'm gonna be sick. What the f- It's fine. It's absolutely fine. We break into Moller's office and find a secret room with documents regarding an Operation Kraken. With Moller's plans collected, we adopt the very stealthy method of just running across the map to get to Exfiltration. Exfiltrate. Why? Why? Let's go! Come on! Getting into Mission 3, our objective is to infiltrate the island of Beaumont Saint Denis to spy on a meeting between some high ranking Nazi officials. As you can imagine, this island is very heavily fortified, including beach guards, sniper towers, and vehicle patrols. So, with that information, we devised a well thought out, heavily planned method of attack to get us into the island. Run. Okay, right, we, we found out nothing. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, that didn't quite go to plan, so we tried to implement plan number two. Use the nearby mines to propel my body over the wall of the island. <laughs> right, yeah, there. fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, safe to say I'm not entirely surprised that didn't go to plan, and instead I just threw my lifeless corpse towards an onslaught of enemies. We finally discover a hidden mechanic of the game that allows us to get onto the island. That mechanic being stealth. You are the worst soldier I've ever seen in my life. Right, that works. Once we make it onto the island, we once again have multiple pathways of getting to our objective. I opt for heading through narrow pathways, through a church, and up to the abbey where we are advised to eavesdrop on the Nazi conversation to gain intel. Well, you can't eavesdrop on a conversation that isn't happening, so we grab the intel and bring an end to Chapter 3. Chapter 4 introduces us to the daunting idea of multiple simultaneous main objectives. In this case, we have used the intel from the previous mission to discover the production site of the Kraken, which is split into three different areas. Firstly, the refinery. Split into multiple floors with enemies guarding each one, you have to reach the main terminal and destroy the refinery, all whilst not being spotted by the elite sniper. Up next, the furnace largest location on the map with the defences to reflect that. To overload the furnace, you have to traverse four different floors, each flooded with enemies and side offices to make you sweat. And finally, the warehouse. Unlike the previous areas, this isn't as simple as sabotage the area and get out. You have to very carefully make your way up to the safe on the second floor take out the nearby guards and break into the safe to grab a shipping manifest, all without being spotted, or you'll get into some all guns blazing Nazi warfare. This is without a doubt our biggest challenge yet, and with 71 deaths under the belt getting into this mission, we're in for a treat. Yeah, I still have no idea how we pulled this off, but we sabotaged the refinery and the furnace, grabbed the manifest and managed to extract in only 35 minutes, and with only 6 deaths. Definitely not a speedrun, but with my track record, might as well be. Now that we're on to mission 5, we're officially halfway through the game, and it's at this point I would normally shamelessly plug my channel and ask that you subscribe and hit the like button. But I've promised myself I'm not going to do that this time. Hitler promised not to invade Czechoslovakia, Jeremy. Welcome to the real world. You know what? You're right. Everyone be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. In Mission 5, we're following the trails of the shipping manifest we picked up earlier, which takes us to Guernsey. Just for your interest, I did some research on Guernsey and found a list of fun things to do. Our mission, however, takes us to Guernsey's apparent underground hospital, where we need to locate the Kraken prototype. Getting there, however, appears to be an issue as we fall victim to Sniper Elite's awful autosave system. No shot, they know I'm here. What the f is that bull? I'll take on all of you. Oh, not this guy. Not, not the guy from behind me. That's not fair. Right, yeah, f it. <laughs> yeah, right. 
<laughs> I think we could all see that coming, couldn't we? <laughs> yeah, right, great. Our plan to get round this is to backtrack to an earlier bunker and systematically murder each of them as they walk through the door. We eventually make our way to the underground hospital, and this is the first time that we see the Kraken logo, and I can't help but feel like I've seen that somewhere before. A Nazi organisation using a red octopus logo. You are deluded, Captain. Now, there's no Kraken in sight here at the hospital, but we've gathered some information and gained two new objectives. The first of which is to locate and destroy the battery Myrus, which we managed to do with no problem whatsoever. We almost got spotted by this individual here, but after making a quick donation of a bullet to his skull, he quickly forgot we were there. We sabotage the cannon and move on to objective number two, investigating the hidden facility. Once we've made it to the facility, we have a number of guards to take out before we can make it to the top. <gasps> what the hell? There's a goddamn gangbang going on up here. Why? Oh my god, that's a bomb. I'm dead? Maybe? <laughs> yeah, okay, that's just unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. We make our way back to the hidden facility and get to the top of the tower. What am I going to do here? Investigate the hidden facility. I am investigating the hidden facility. I'm not even in the hidden facility. What the f am I doing? Oh my god, chat. Yep, that's right, everyone. I am in the completely wrong place. We make our way slightly eastwards and find a tunnel leading underground, which, now that I think about it, is a lot more hidden than a tower above ground with very obvious weaponry placed around it. Now we're in the real hidden facility, we locate the Kraken prototype and our objective has updated to destroy it. Fortunately, we managed to locate some scuttle codes and we radio those over to destroy the Kraken, which brings an end to the mission. Mission 6 puts our investigation into Operation Kraken on hold to help liberate a small French town on D-Day, aptly named as we're about to get deed down. This again is a mission with multiple objectives, and with how our previous mission with multiple objectives went, I was feeling pretty confident. Our first objective is to neutralise three defences on a nearby town, those defences being a sniper, a tank, and a Nazi communication centre. The first defence we decide to take out is the sniper, with the thought pattern being, at least they're not being shot at whilst trying to do everything else. Now, your thought is probably going to be, but Moo, you're still going to be shot at by other enemies, so it doesn't really matter. Now, given the circumstances, let me teach you a little French. Au contraire, which briefly translates to, you absolute imbecile. You have never been more wrong in your life. How on earth have you survived this long, you waste of oxygen? And I'll show you why. If we sit here, we can patiently wait for every enemy on the south side of the map to come to us, as we pick them off one by one. I sat here for about 10 minutes. With that out of the way, we take out the tank and the communications with no trouble whatsoever. Boom, liberate the southern town. Oh, popped off there chat. Objective number two is to cross a bridge, which is a lot less simple than it seems, as this bridge is being watched by three snipers. Now, first of all, some of the angles that you have to pull off whilst attempting to dispose of these snipers are just ludicrous. You need to be the love child of Pythagoras and an Olympic gymnast to hit the shots you need to. And you can't move any closer because, do you know what? They've riddled the grounds with goddamn enemies as well. Oh, and you're being sniped at as well, don't worry about that. Okay, what if you move? Further away, different angle. Oh, don't worry, developers have thought of that. Here's a tank. You can get blown up and fly over the bridge for all they care, but even if you manage to get away from that, you take out a majority of the snipers. The other one just hides in the back of a building, doesn't he? So you have to push away, and then when you push in, ooh, surprise, enemies, grenades, enemies, enemies, is absolute bullshit. We finally managed to cross the bridge and make our way to objective number three, destroy a tank. Actually, this is surprisingly easy. The game gives you a number of Panzerfausts, and after three shots, it blows up. There's also very few enemies around at this point in the mission. Before we extract, there is one more thing I wanted to do. Oh, he's here, right. Hello, sir! 
<laughs> oh no! Oh, I wanted to see more of that. Holy Christ! Oh my God! Look at his arm. He's f now mission seven. A, a part of me almost doesn't want to talk about this mission. I thought some of the other missions were bad. This was literally hell for me. And an hour into this mission, I had completed zero of the three objectives and had died more times than I care to admit. Mission 7 puts us back on track with Operation Kraken, and our objective is to infiltrate the dome. And this part of the mission is where everything goes south, as we make our way to the apparently less defended Nazi checkpoint. At this checkpoint, there were still, however, numerous enemies of different types which caused me a lot of issues. We had cars filled with infantry, a tank, snipers, multiple pathways that ground enemies can come from. Overall, getting through this checkpoint alone to make our way to the objective, we're not even there yet, took an hour and four minutes and a total of 45 deaths. Eventually, believe it or not, we do actually make our way into the dome, take out the enemies inside and make a shocking discovery. I can hold B to prone. What the f- Haha, <laughs> excuse me? Yes, all of the time we had been trying to go through any fence in the first seven chapters, we had only been crouched and not prone. I'll be the first to admit, when I struggled getting through the fences, I said some choice words about this game, but with this information, I'll be the bigger person and admit, I was wrong. You're not just wrong, you're stupid. Yes, thank you, Cat in the Hat. And you're ugly, just like your mum. Okay, well that's just not very nice. In the dome, we find out that the Kraken was never here and this was just a test site. What we do discover, however, is the Kraken guidance system and an underground refueling station, which now need to be sabotaged. We make our way to the underground refueling station and blow that up by overloading the ethanol and liquid nitrogen pipelines. Now, I'm no scientist, but I have literally no idea how those two chemicals can be used to fuel rockets. So if anyone watching this happens to be a scientist, please let me know how this works in the comments down below. Hell, come to think of it, even if you're not a scientist, make a guess in the comments below. Oh, I've done one objective. <laughs> At this point, we're right next door to the lake compound. So we walk over and sabotage that by destroying the release hatch and firing a rocket to blow it all up. The final objective is to sabotage the guidance system and for something so pivotal, you'd think it would be heavily guarded, but apparently not. They had this one guard at the top of the tower and that was it. We took him out sabotage the system, and then exfiltrated the mission. Mission 8 is designed to be the hardest mission in the game, and boy, the developers were not messing around when creating this. The mission starts off in what appears to be the recently bombed town of Saint Nazaire. Well, either that or modern day England. Our first objective is to make it through the rundown houses and to the entrance to the sewers at the park on the other side of the town. This, however, is anything but a walk in the park. Do you get it? D do you get the joke? Yeah. Long story short, we die. A lot. Our first problem area of the mission comes at this house here, and I think this is strictly because of the unlimited amount of enemies that sprint towards you, as if you're the last bratwurst at an all-you-can-eat buffet. No matter how many of these enemies you take out, it will always end up in the same result. Where are my bullets going, my man? Excuse me? We tried different approaches of taking out the snipers and then trying to sneak round. However, that was to no avail either. Eventually, we got to a point where the soldiers had managed to lose sight of me, so in typical sniper elite fashion, we take it very slow and make our way to the park. Right, so there's the park. You know what? I. I'm thinking too long term. It's taken me about 40 minutes to get here. So we're gonna take it slow. Think point by point. You know chat, I like taking it slow. This is this is really good taking it slow. Yep, taking it slow is going really well for me. That's on me being able to heal here, chat. 
I can't believe I've got this far. I literally just ran. That tactic would only get us so far though, as we very quickly realised the error of our ways. We now have a whole army, both in front of us and behind us. Not being able to get into the sewers in the first few attempts, I managed to backtrack into a nearby dilapidated crack den to hold off some enemies. After a few deaths in here, we get to attempt 200. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to stay under 200, so I'm going to say 40. 40 deaths is really where I want to be at. Attempt 200 is where we finally take out enough enemies to be able to make a run for the sewers. Oh my god, you know what? It's a cheap way to get to the objective, but I'll take it. Let's go, baby! Once we make it through the sewers, we discover the storage facility of the Nazi U-boats, all of which need to be destroyed. Fortunately, there are very conveniently placed items that will allow you to destroy each of the U-boats. The first two we managed to take down without any issues, as they can be very easily destroyed from the control panels nearby. The third boat, however, didn't go as swimmingly. Pun intended. That did cool. What was the point in that? <laughs> Once we'd made it to the control panel, we find that destroying it does nothing at all. We actually have to be on the ground floor to destroy the last boat. But having had enough of using stealth to destroy these boats, I take a different approach. I brutally murder every guard in here to clear my way to the final boat. With that destroyed, a door to a secret boat pen opens and would you believe it, there are more boats. Our method for this was distracting a large majority of the enemies with a nearby motor, sabotage the boats and then sabotage the fuel supply at the back. Altogether, this wasn't too bad. The main part of the mission was actually getting into the sewers to begin with. Once we sabotage the fuel supply, we make it outside and destroy it with a sniper shot. <laughs> Let's try that again. We make it outside, shoot the sniper on the roof before he even sees us, and then destroy the fuel supply. With that out of the way, we'd made our way to the ninth and final mission, and it's at this point I mentally prepared myself. We'd been through so much in the first eight missions, and with the troubles I've had adjusting to the type of gameplay required to get this far, I didn't know if I was prepared for what the developers had in store for us. What would we need to do? Would we need to sneak through a Nazi base to take out our final target? Battle through thick and thin to get to Moller? Take on battalion after battalion of enemies as they tried to prevent us from taking out their leader? Whatever was left, I knew I hadn't come this far to quit. I was going to get this challenge done whether it took me one attempt or 1,000. And with the fury of stream chat behind me, we loaded in to the final mission. Watch this. Here we go, chat. Come on. Oh. Let's go! Woo! And just like that, we've completed Sniper Elite 5 on the hardest difficulty and earned ourselves the best of the best achievement, which brings an end to our challenge. But not for long! That's right. On a game like Sniper Elite, I can't help but feel slightly underwhelmed, like I'm missing an experience pivotal to the game series. What the hell? Let's kill Hitler. Take that, Hitler! Now we're a fewer a fewer, I feel as if Carl's mission is complete, and therefore, so is ours. This game is definitely not something I would normally play, and as you've discovered today, stealth is not really my forte. However, with that being said, I did really enjoy Sniper Elite 5. The environment variety between missions, the multiple pathways you can take to traverse each area, and an engaging storyline really came together to create a game that anyone can enjoy despite being new to the series. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if so, be sure to leave a like below and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Haha, <laughs> excuse me?